Violin vibrato made easy. Er, I mean, violin is still very difficult, but it's always nice when it's not as difficult as it has to be. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. A common question for many enterprising young violin students is, when, oh when, do I get to start learning vibrato? Now, the correct answer to this question is, and always should be, whenever your teacher tells you you're ready. And if you currently don't have a teacher, then you should, of course, send an email to admin at murphymusicacademy.org to set up your free trial lesson with one of ours. But I digress. However, I happen to know that many of you are going to try to do it on your own anyway, and you might as well try to learn it the correct way. Now, I already did make a video on vibrato actually very early on in this channel, and I still hold to everything in that video, but you might notice that that is the longest video I have on this channel, nearly half an hour long, and the method of learning vibrato in that video, while it definitely works, is much more complicated and involved and usually takes quite a bit more time. What I'm going to show you today is how I teach usually children to learn vibrato. Because one thing I'm not going to do is get out a metronome and force a child to very, very methodically go exactly to the metronome beat. Their parents and probably the child themselves would kill me. So how do I go about teaching vibrato to a seven-year-old? Well, the most important motion that you want to get first is the motion of knocking. Yes, as if we are knocking on a door. Most children of that age have a lot of experience knocking on their parents' doors in the middle of the night. I definitely did. So they're usually very familiar with this motion. And yes, I am teaching arm vibrato, so the knocking motion should come from the elbow. Now, the first place we want to employ the knocking motion in violin vibrato is actually going to be up here next to the violin. So what you want to make sure you do is have your hand shaped like an L, and we're going to place the pad of the thumb on the crook of the top of the neck right here. So you're going to hold the violin normally, okay? whether using a sh uh, shoulder rest or not. Obviously, those of you who know me know I don't use one. But even if you do, you want to feel the support of the violin on the thumb. So we're holding the violin like this. And the knocking needs to come this way. So you don't want to be stretching your hand over the violin. You want to have a fairly straight wrist like this. Touch the body of the violin with your palm, and then you're just going to pull away using from here, gently, from the violin, and then come back to the violin. And what we want to employ with this motion first is a very slow rhythm. So you're going to go knock, 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 knock. Once you've got this motion, then you can go a little bit faster. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, 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 knock. And you keep doing this, going slightly faster and slightly faster. The most important thing being that the knocks that you are doing are even. So if you have like a knock, 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 well, which sometimes can happen, that's not very good and you need to go a little bit slower. But eventually you get to this point where you're going at about this speed. Knock, 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 knock. And the faster you go, the narrower your knocking motion is going to be. Knock, knock. And then eventually we get to knock, 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 knock. And then once you have this knocking motion here at the body of the violin, at about this tempo, knock, 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 then it is time to go to step two. Now step two is very similar to step one in that we are still employing the knocking motion but it's going to be a little bit different in how we place our hand. You see, here we are really trying to take advantage of feeling the thumb being the anchor point. Now, here, we're going to put the violin in the webbing here, where you should never put it, but we're going to put it here because this is going to teach us how to not squeeze, because what we're going to do is slide our hand in a big knocking motion this way. And by the way, make sure that the weight of the violin is still sitting on the hand. So don't just have it hovering out here and you just kind of move your hand this way. You still want to feel the weight of the violin in your hand. So if you have to take your chin off, you can even hold the violin with your other hand, right? Make sure that the violin is sitting in your hand. And we're going to do something very similar. Starting from the body of the violin, keeping the hand and arm and wrist very straight. 
going all the way to the pegs. We're going to knock, 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 knock. That's pretty easy, right? Then what we do is we cut the distance in half, start halfway up the neck, and we do the same thing. Knock, and we go a little faster. Knock, 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 knock. And then we cut it in half again. Start here, knock, 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 knock. And then basically you just do the fast knocking right here at this point. And by the way, always think in terms of doing a knock. Don't let your mind think you're doing vibrato yet, even though you are basically doing the vibrato motion. Knock, 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 knock. And also, if somebody is helping you with this, which if you're a child, hopefully your parent is, then it can be helpful for somebody to place their hand or a book or anything so that you actually have something here to knock against. So you actually feel the sensation of it being a knock and you can also hear the knocking sound so you can tell whether you're doing an even rhythm to the knock. And if your hand, if this works for your hand, you can actually also knock against the peg. Just make sure you don't knock too hard. Now, once a student has a good grasp of this knocking idea and can knock here at a good speed very evenly and here at a good speed very evenly, then it is time to employ the knocking motion with a finger held down. So usually I start with the third finger. They put the third finger on the A string and I tell them again, don't try to do vibrato. Just hold the finger down and knock. And then put your bow to it. And there's your vibrato. So a student has now learned vibrato. Right? It actually is that simple to learn vibrato right off the bat, at least the most basic level of vibrato. Of course, once someone first learns this and they start knocking, doing the knocking motion with the different fingers down, which we of course practice more than the third finger, right? we practice on all the fingers. But once they have this motion, then they can start to apply it to different pieces and then I can start to work with them on improving their vibrato because usually when they first start, it's a bit wide and a bit slow. But this is, at the most basic level, what vibrato is in terms of body mechanics. Now, this is the simplest and, in my experience, most effective way to teach vibrato at the most basic level, but I do need to offer one caveat. I've looked at my demographics and I know that most of you are not children, and unfortunately, in my experience, one of the things that children do have a much easier time learning than adults is vibrato. I don't know why this is, but this has been what I've noticed, and I've also noticed that this particular way of teaching vibrato also works best with children. It does seem to be a lot simpler, and it would be nice if it just worked with everybody, but this has been my experience. It doesn't mean it won't work for you, but very often I found that the more hardline approach where you just get a metronome out and practice in time with the metronome, slowly getting it to go faster and faster, which is what I outlined in my first video, that tends to work a lot better with adults, especially if they're struggling with vibrato. But of course, do whatever your teacher wants you to do. Make sure that you are ready to start learning vibrato. And if you don't have a teacher, murphymusicacademy.org. I've been Tobiah for Murphy Music Academy, always here to remind you that there is no pleasure in mediocrity. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.